the JKB back with another episode. Today on the show, I'd like to do Far Cry Primal. Thank you so much to the Donut Queen over at Ubisoft for sending over the review copy. Let's not waste any time. As always, I ask you guys on Twitter and Facebook, what do you want to know about the game? This time, you asked really stupid fucking questions. Not gonna answer those. A few of you did ask some serious questions, but let's just get into the review. Thank you so much for watching. Far Cry Primal is an action-adventure game set in 10,000 BCE. It takes place in a gorgeous, luscious environment known as the Oris Valley in Central Europe. I hope, I hope I'm saying that right. The world is filled with huge wildlife such as the woolly mammoth, white lions, and saber-toothed cats that will rip your goddamn throat out. The game is more about survival and building up your own tribe than previous installments of Far Cry, and you'll face dangerous situations at every turn from other tribes, and, it, and I'm telling you, super duper, haven't said that for a while, intimidating wildlife. The first thing I have to mention is Elias Tefexis is the main character, Takar, and I think he does an amazing job in this. They've created their own language. Ubisoft went out there and designed a whole language for all of the tribes I don't understand a fucking word of it, and that might hinder the main story a little bit because then you come down to subtitles, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but it also becomes more of a visual uh, storytelling, you know, you gotta really get into the story, you're not getting into the story with dialogue so much as reading dialogue on the screen, and a lot of people out there might not actually enjoy reading that, so it's one of those tricky things, the dialogue is interesting, I like hearing it. They, it sounds like they're saying the word fuck constantly, which I find amusing because I'm immature. But the story, I'll just say right now, is a little bare bones. But in a game like this, especially with no actual English, like the, the, the language English is not happening in the game. They're talking whatever it is and it's, they're basically like, oh fuck, 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 fuck. There's no English in it. There's subtitles and you understand what they're saying by that. But does that hinder a video game? I mean, not really. Does it take away from the story aspect? Not really. But it, it kind of keeps it a little bare bones. Very simple plot. You're, you're just simply there to take back the land and, and fight for your tribe. And I think that that is, is sufficient enough in this game. I know that a lot of people are saying, well, the story is weak, blah, blah, blah. I just think it's good enough for this game. Being set in 10,000 BCE, you'll be faced with a whole new type of gameplay that's mostly based on melee weapons. You'll also be forced to hunt for your food and your survival. When I started to play the game, I didn't realize that the survival aspect would be so prominent right off the bat. The first thing you have to do is craft your first weapon. I felt I felt engaged. I was like, this is awesome. I, the, the first cutscene, I don't want to give away anything in this because I got, I want you guys to actually experience it, but the first cutscene really puts you into it, puts you right into the shit. You understand what you're supposed to be doing in this world. It's about survival. It's about hunting. It's about creating life and basically building a village. I was going to say fucking. It, it actually is about fucking too because cave people fucked and you see them do it in this game and I felt really bad putting an arrow in the back of someone's head as he was like giving it to this girl. I did it anyways. Cock block that son of a bitch. The main thing you'll be doing throughout this game are very simple tasks like you've done in other previous Far Cry games. Take over a, you know, an outpost, now it's yours. But they've, they've really introduced something new to this and that would be you building up your village and your tribe. So as you're walking around in the open world, you'll see a tribesman and you can protect them, save them, and that person will actually go back to your village and actually put into account what you've done. So when you are out there in the open, you can save these people in these missions and open up new areas, which will also open up new stashes for you in the stash becomes bigger with the more people that you have on your side. I mean, the game really has, has depth to it. It has a lot of depth and hunting for your food is awesome. I absolutely love it. Right off the bat, they teach you, you have to sneak around. That's the only way you're gonna be able to attack 
these goats or these warthogs or hogs, whatever they're called, and to get the bigger enemies off of your ass, you're gonna have to hide in bushes and you're gonna have to be still, you have to be stealthy. There's definitely missions where you want to be just sitting in a bush, concentrating on that and sending this is really cool, I love this aspect of the game. You become a beast master and you tame the wild animals and you can send them into battle and I'll get into that in a bit. Players can tame wildlife such as prehistoric badgers which I highly suggest to do because there's nothing like sending a badger to eat your enemy's face off and saber toothed cats in the game by giving them food. Once you've tamed this animal they're going to accompany you throughout your game. They also have different behaviors so if you use for instance, the honey badger, he's more straightforward a fucking badass and he just wants to rip the face off of your enemies. If you want to use more of a tank-like ability, you're going to use your bear. Players can also scout enemies, outposts, and highlight enemies by using this huge gigantic owl that you get right off the bat in the game. And it's kind of like using your own little drone, like they've taken it from Splinter Cell. Another cool aspect about Far Cry Primal is the day-night cycle. During the day, animals will attack you. You'll see animals chasing each other all around the map. You have the option to either engage in this, this scenario that's playing out in front of you, or you can hang back, like in a cave, and just watch it happen, or from a ledge, watch it happen. But at nighttime is where the game really changes. At nighttime, Everything is much harder and you can also get much more rare items if you go out in the nighttime. And it's it's almost like, yeah, a lot of people are calling, you know, they took it from dying light, the idea that nighttime would be far more terrifying. And I have to say, there are moments at the beginning and it kind of does wear off, I'll be honest with you. After a while, nighttime is not as hard as I think it should have been. But the survival aspect at nighttime is interesting because you'll be in the middle of a mission, all of a sudden night falls, and that's when the rare, really strong animals will just show up and be super powerful at nighttime, and you're just like, holy shit, you're thrown off, and it's those real moments in the game that make this interesting because it didn't if it didn't have those moments and it was a scripted, you know, nighttime is just nighttime and the animals are tougher, if it didn't have that real vibe where you don't really know when an animal's going to attack you, that's where this game really does nail it down because in a main story mission, you want those things to happen. It keeps it alive. The world is alive. Becoming the Beastmaster is spectacular. This is where uh, one of your tribesmen basically poisons the shit out of you and you go into a lucid dream, but in the lucid dream you realize that you can control this owl which in its own right is awesome. The owl is essentially a drone that lets you look over the whole battlefield and come up with your strategy. Do you want to send your pet in there? Do you want to go in stealth? Do you want to go balls to the wall with your, you know, weapons? That's how you use your owl, but on top of it, you start to realize you can tame all of these animals and you can use them to your your advantage. I mean, you can use the giant bear to send into a camp and rip the faces off of all of the tribesmen. You can use, this one's the best, a goddamn honey badger. Honey badgers are back. There's nothing like sending a honey badger to eat the face off of your enemy. This is one of the aspects of the game that keeps it fresh, keeps it different than Far Cry 4, and this is what a lot of people were saying is there enough content. The Beastmaster mode, which lets you control the beasts, is fucking awesome, and the nighttime mode is another aspect that they put on top of Far Cry and made the series even better now, and it's going to be hard to go back to Far Cry 4 and not have those things now, so we're going to get used to those and then move on. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do, but in this game, I'm telling you, there's nothing like sending a bear to eat the face off your enemies. Everybody and their fucking mother asked me, is the game enough of a change from previous games to make it worth the price, or is it just Far Cry 4 with DLC? I'll answer that question because everybody was asking it. Absolutely, this is a Far Cry game. You have to go out there and play. I give it right now. Oh, you know what? I'll make you wait because I have some positives and some negatives that I want to go over. The first negative I have to say about Far Cry Primal is the combat definitely is repetitive. You use the same weapons over and over with slight minor upgrades that happen as you progress through the game. But 
there's still nothing like putting a, a prehistoric arrow through somebody's head from across the lake. So it is repetitive. A lot of the combat you'll get into is melee. So it's up close. It's going to be the same thing over and over. But it's, I mean, you can complain about, far, you know, first person shooters being, you know, just shooting guns. You could say that about a first person shooter. But this is an adventure game that's trying something new. And I give it, I mean, it, it is repetitive. But I still give it the thumbs up for trying something new, trying to make a game that we don't just go balls to the wall with explosions. So it's kind of a plus minus thing. The other negative, the story is very bare bones. However, it did keep me uh, interested enough to want to build up my village. You gotta keep in mind this game is simple. You just wanna build up your village and and build families and, and and take over the land. That's essentially what you want to do because the other tribes are assholes. They want to eat you. They literally want to eat everybody in the game. So I got to get to the positives now. Then I'll give you my score. They developed a language for the game. I got to give them props for that. Elias Defects is reading the script and the other cast members. I can't imagine. Can you imagine reading the script and being like, what the fuck does this mean? And what am I saying? How do I pronounce this? Very hard. I mean, as an actor, that has got to be very hard. The next thing I gotta say is the map size is is huge. This map is huge. There's tons to do, caves to explore. A lot is going on on the map. You know, things will randomly pop up, and you have the option to go do it or just pass it by. Now, another thing I didn't even talk about is in the northern area of the map. It's snowing and you start to freeze and that's where, you know, obviously fire plays a big role in this game. I didn't even bring this up, but you use your tools to survive and fire is definitely your biggest ally in this game. And when you're up north, you have to craft really good gear or you'll start to freeze and you'll die after a certain amount of time. Or you have to build a campfire somewhere and stay by fire. So that's another aspect of the survival you know, whole aspect of the game that I absolutely really think is cool. That it's not just cheap. It's not, you know, in Skyrim, you can go into the cold weather and you're just there and it doesn't affect you. But in this, you gotta actually stay warm. Taming the wildlife is amazing. That, I have to say, that's one of the highlights of the game. To be able to send a bear in to eat off the face of your enemies, but also to protect you from the other animals. You can send a, you know, your, your white wolf right into a pack of wolves that are about to attack you and he'll scare the shit out of them and save the day. This is two more. I've got two more and then the score. This is the best looking Far Cry game I've ever seen. I love the engine. I love what they've done with it. I did see minor, you know, pop in and out. The frame rate was smooth as butter. It was amazing. It was like my ex-girlfriend's ass. <sighs> However, I mean... At least this game has a lot of depth to it. Um, and lastly, I'm just gonna say, this game has enough variety to keep you interested for the whole playthrough. It's a huge game. It's gonna take you 40 hours minimum to really complete everything in it. There's a lot of secrets, which I'm not gonna give away. There's a ton of things you wanna collect while you're going through this. You're gonna be constantly, I mean constantly, crafting things like your arrows and all of your weapons and I didn't even talk about the weapons because to be honest they're they're very similar similar you have you know a lot of wood and stone put together and you beat the shit out of people with it or you have a very pokey item or you have arrows so in saying all this I give it an 8 out of 10 and if you are a fan of Far Cry the series this is a welcome addition. It might be disappointing to some people out there that we're expecting a little bit more. I mean, it, it really does come down to the borderline if it is enough. But I'll say personally for me, more than enough for me personally. I absolutely loved it. Had a great time with it. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. And if you could share it on social media with your aunts, your estranged cousins, all those weirdos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go play Layers of Fear and shit my pants. Thank you so much. I love you boys and girls.